specific heat capacity. I like this. My friends at Fahrenheit's how f people feel. Celsius is how water feels, and Kelvin is how molecules feel. Ooh. But it's true, actually, uh, at least for Celsius, because it's defined, right, by water. It's defined by zero degrees Celsius is when water freezes, and hundreds degrees Celsius is when water boils. And I like how Kelvin is like how molecules feel. All right, so let's talk about what happens when you actually raise the temperature. How do you do that? Well, you're adding heat. In other words, you're adding energy here. So that's Q, for example. Remember, Q equals heat. Remember, that's measured in joules. So as you're throwing heat into something, uh, well, that energy can be used for doing things. In this case, the energy is going to be used to increase the temperature. That's what we're going to be discussing here. There's another one where you're changing phase, but in this case, we're not caring about that right now. So let's actually look at what happens. Let me just show you another animation from PHET. I love them. So this is their uh, energy forms and changes one. So I've lifted up a, uh, a little thing of uh, water here, plunked it here, and I'm going to do it where I can actually see the energy symbols. I want to see little E's. So what's going to happen is as I increase the temperature, I want you to watch like a unit of energy going into the water, and you're going to notice that that's going to cause the water temperature to change. So watch. As I add energy here, can you see energy is being added? Look at the temperature going up. So that's happening. That's what's going on right now, right, when we're doing this specific heat capacity. This whole idea that as I keep adding energy, in other words, keep adding heat, this energy is being used to heat up these molecules. That means they're moving faster. Of course, at some point, some of them are going to start escaping. We're going to see some other things happen. I'll try to stop it when that happens. So around here now, I think, is probably as much as it can take. Ah, oh, there we go. So we'll stop there. We'll go maybe back down. So we'll take some out. There we go. Around here. So if we go around here now, we've got our energy right here has been used to raise the temperature. That's what we're concerned about here. So we have a definition then. The first specific heat capacity is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one unit of mass of this substance by one degree Kelvin. And we have this equation. Remember before we were talking about Q's. Well, now we have this uh, right here from your data booklet, which goes Q equals M times C times delta T. Okay, so what are the units of each of these? Well, let's talk about, first of all, heat. Heat, remember, is a form of energy, so it's in joules. M is mass, and that is in kilograms. Change in temperature, well, we should probably say, well, it's either degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin, because remember, a change in temperature can be either. And then specific heat capacity, how can I get that? That at least the units. Well, if I think about the equation for it, what if I got C by itself? Do you notice uh, to get C by itself, I'd have Q divided by M. So I'd have this Q on the top, I'd have M on the bottom, and I'd also have divided by uh, delta T. So that means the units then would be units of Q, which let's see, that's joules, so we'll say this is in joules. And then divide that by units of M, so that must be kilograms, so we'll say joules per kilogram. And then delta T, that'll be, you know, per Kelvin, for example. So it'll be joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And here's a really important exam tip is that when I'm solving questions, I just like to set up like left side and right side, just like a who gained uh, energy and who lost energy. In other words, who went up in temperature, who went down. And I'm going to write, I always just write like a Q, like this, say Q gained equals Q loss. And I set up like this. And that means I set up then a little mini equation then for like, hey, everyone who is gaining you know, energy, then I put them on the left side. Anyone who's losing energy, I put them on the right side. Because in case there's other things, it could be like uh, there's a cup maybe, and there's also water. Maybe the cup raises its temperature, the water does too. So you've got to say like who's, who's raising and lowering their temperatures. But anyone who's gaining temperature or gaining, uh, you know, increasing in temperature, that means they're gaining heat. That means I'll set up an MC delta T for each side basically. Okay, so let's look at an example. And I've got uh, where we have a cube of metal and it's dropped into some water. And the good news is we don't care about the water container's mass, we just care about the water itself. Now we're told that the specific heat capacity of the water is three times the specific heat capacity of the metal. So right away I can write an equation. I could say C with little subscript water is equal to three times C of metal. You know, I can say so CW equals three CM. Okay, what can I do with this? Well, we'll find out. I guess now what we can do is, uh, oh, we know the mass of the metal is the same as the mass of the water. So that means mass of metal equals mass of water. Okay, maybe that'll be helpful. Let's see. It tells the initial temperature of the metal is 300 Kelvin. The initial temperature of the water is 50 degrees Kelvin. What is the final equilibrium temperature of the water? 
Well, like before when I talked about I always set up an equation like Q lost equals Q gained, I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to say so Q gained, so whoever goes up in temperature is going to equal Q lost, whoever goes down in temperature. So now let's think about it kind of carefully right here. Who goes up in temperature? Is it the metal or is it the water? Well, the metal's initial temperature was 300. The water is 50, so it must be the water then they'll be gaining. So that means I'm going to say QW equals QM. In other words, the metal will lose energy because the equilibrium will be somewhere between 300 and 50. You know, like that's, if you leave them long enough, the water that goes as a cube of metal that goes into the water, they'll eventually become an equilibrium. That's where the temperature is the same. So that means I'm just going to set up my equation with some MC delta T's. Remember, I'm going to use that idea, right? The Q equals MC delta T. Except now I'm going to write specific equations now for each of these. So that means now I can say, okay, M water. I'll just write it down like this. So M water times C water times delta T water. That must equal M metal C metal delta T metal. Now, do I know anything? Can I replace anything? Yes, I know that because mass of metal equals mass of uh, water, that means I know that these two here will cancel out. Right? Because this is equal to the same as this. If I divide it, I end up with 1. So that's nice. And instead of CW, what am I going to put in? I'm going to put in 3CM. So instead of CW here, I'm going to say 3CM. Okay, now I got to deal with the change in temperature as well. So what's the temperature change of the water? Well, it's going to go from 50 all the way up to some equilibrium temperature. I'm going to call it T. And that means that one will be greater than what it started off at. So I could say like, you know, T minus 50 because it'll start off uh, it'll start off at something small and go big. If I want the change, it'll go big minus small. Well, that whole thing will equal, let's see, CM times T delta Tm, which will be, again, this change in temperature of the metal. Now this one starts at 300, so I'll put the 300 first, and I subtract from that the equilibrium temperature, because by necessity the temperature must be less, like the equilibrium must be less than the starting one. Good news then, I again, can uh, cancel out some things, the threes at least, uh, sorry, the Cm cancels out. So now maybe I'll just expand this, what's 3 times T? Well, it's 3T. And 3 times 50 is 150, so I'll say 3t minus 150. That equals 300 minus t. My goal is to get t by itself, by the way, so I'll move my minus t to the left side. It means I have 3t plus 1t gives me 4t. And if I really wanted to write out all the steps, I have minus 150. All that equals 300. Of course, I can move my 150 to the right, so that means I have 4t equals, let's see, minus 150 to the right becomes a plus 150. So 300 plus 150 is 450. And if I keep going then, I end up with T equals, well, 450 divided by 4, which is, what says, 112.5, I think it is, uh, which, by the way, will be Kelvin. And I want to do this to three significant figures, so that means I'll say 113. So I'll say the temperature, the equilibrium, temp equilibrium temperature will be roughly 113 Kelvin. And that's my final answer. So again, the key to solving this thing right here was, I think, to just not panic. You just set up an equation for Q gained equals Q lost, and you just put everything on one side that gains you know, energy, everything on the other side that loses energy, and just set them equal to solve what you need. Just be really careful at T minus 50, and here it was 300 minus T. But once you get those, hopefully this here will be a lot simpler.